Everything in Doom hates you. Your former colleagues hate you. These farm animals hate you. Weird aliens hate you. Lasagna covered floors hate you. Hell, even walls will do anything to make your life miserable. Not just walls, even ceilings will often try to break your spine and kneecaps. Yes, we're going to talk about crushers. They can function as a hazard, as well as a tool to help you kill enemies. Crushers are, to me, shrouded in mystery. They feel incredibly broken, and their damage output can be all over the place. The Doom Wiki doesn't really... The Doom Wiki doesn't really provide much information about the exact damage outputs, tricks you can apply, and how broken they are functionally. Hey, that's why this channel exists. It's time to fully explore crushers, how they work, or perhaps even, how they don't work. So what exactly is a crusher in Doom? It's a sector that oscillates up and down, and anything caught underneath will take damage. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Doom has three different crushers you can utilize as a map maker. You've got fast crushers. These move at two map units per game tick. They move down until they've reached the bottom limit, which is eight units above the floor. When moving down, they will deal 10 damage to entities every four game ticks. Fast crushers will also emit a brown noise-like sound. In Vanilla Doom, you can only activate fast crushers through walkover triggers, both one-time use triggers and repeatable. The second type is called a slow crusher. These move at one map unit per game tick. Their bottom limit is also set to 8 units above the floor. The damage is the same as fast crushers, dealing 10 damage every 4 ticks. But these are far deadlier, because slow crushers will move down 8 times slower after trapping an entity. The speed will be restored to 1 map unit per game tick after it switches directions at the bottom limit. These also emit a brown noise-like sound. In Vanilla Doom, you can activate these through one-time use and repeatable walkover triggers, as well as a one-time use switch. The third type is exactly the same as the slow crusher, with the only difference being the sound. The brown noise is gone, instead it will make a mechanical sound when switching directions. In Vanilla Doom, you can only activate these through one-time use walkover triggers. There's one more type which technically isn't considered a crusher, but still crushes. Confusing, I know. Well, it's a crusher in reverse. The floor raises, rather than lowering the ceiling. These move at one map unit per game tick, and will stop at 8 units below the ceiling. The damage is the same at 10 damage every 4 game ticks. They emit a brown noise while moving, and a mechanical click when they reach the destination. These do not oscillate. The fact that they do not oscillate is quite bad. It's actually shocking how these manage to get into the game at all. They are softlocked magnets. If you've got enough health and armor, these will not kill you and permanently trap the player. Watch this. Softlock. Softlock. Softlock! Once a ceiling crusher is activated, it won't stop moving until the player crosses a special crusher stopping trigger. Two types exist, one-time use and repeatable. Note that these will only stop ceiling crushers, so not the floor crusher. Ceiling crushers are pretty unique in the sense that once they start crushing, they will not do anything else. For example, here we've got a door with three switches. One switch will close the door, the second one will open the door, the third one turns the door into a crusher. Here we've placed the trigger to stop the crusher. If you try to open or close the door with the first two switches, nothing will happen. Crushers have a special piece of code attached to see if it's in stasis. When that's the case, no other action is allowed ever again except for crusher related ones. Not even actions related to moving the floor will work. The entire sector will be locked into ceiling crush exclusivity. So how rare are crushes in Doom and Doom 2? The first crusher you encounter in Doom is in E2M2. Then we've got some in E2M4, E2M6, E3M4, E3M5 and E4M7. As for floor crushers, we've got one in E2M4, E3M6, E4M1 and E4M3. The one in E4M3 is the only switch activated floor crusher in both Doom and Doom 2. In Doom 2, it's not map 6 where you encounter the first crusher, it's actually map 4. These windows use the third slow crusher variant that doesn't play the brown noise. This is the only instance in both Doom and Doom 2 that uses this crusher. As for the crusher in map 6, this one is also unique. It's the only switch activated ceiling crusher in Doom and Doom 2. Then there are some crushers in map 13, map 14 and map 19. 
only one floor crusher appears in Doom 2, and it's in map 20. It's also the only repeatable walkover floor crusher in Doom and Doom 2. Alright, let's have a good look at crusher damage. We've mentioned it being 10 damage every 4 game ticks, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Damage is done every 4 game ticks, but the game ticks are not bound to the crusher, it's a global level timer. Depending on the distance the crusher must travel, and the game tick the crusher was activated, you can fit a variable amount of crusher damage ticks, so to speak. We can look at the crusher damage like this. We've got 3 different crushers, fast, slow, and floor. These all have different speeds, so the amount of crusher damage ticks will be affected. Next, we must divide the crushed entities into groups based on their height to determine the maximum damage for each. In group A, we've got entities with a height of 16 map units. Sorry John, we're doing this for science. For damages, we're checking 4 different game ticks. Game ticks where its remainders are 0, 1, 2 or 3 after performing the modulo operation. This is important because as explained earlier, there are scenarios where more crusher damage ticks will fit in the crusher's travel distance and entity height. Crushing John with a fast crusher will deal 10 or 30 damage, depending on which game tick the crusher starts crushing. Slow crushers will either deal 140, 150 or 160 damage. We need to take into account, however, that a slow crusher could have already slowed down before crushing John. This can happen when a taller entity next to John gets crushed first. If that's the case, then the maximum damage will be 180. Floor crushes will do 20 or 40 damage. In group B, we've got entities with a height of 42 map units. Only barrels here. Fast crushes will do 40, 50 or 60 damage. Slow crushes will do 660, 670 or 680 damage. If the slow crusher was already slowed down, then it's 700 damage. Floor crushes will do 80, 90 or 100 damage. I'm aware that barrels only have 20 health, this is all theoretical damage. Group C is next where we've got a large amount of entities, including the player. Their height is 56 map units. Fast crushes will do 60 or 80 damage. Slow crushes will do 940, 950 or 960 damage. If already slowed down, then it will do 980 damage. Yeah, not even a Megasphere will help you once you're fully trapped. Brutal stuff. Floor crushes will deal 120 or 140 damage. Group D has entities with a height of 64 map units. Fast crushes will do 70 or 90 damage. Slow crushes will do 1100, 1110 or 1120 damage. When already slowed down, that damage will be 1140. Floor crushes will do 140 or 160 damage. Group E only has Commander Keen, which has a height of 72 map units. Fast crushes will do 80 or 100 damage. Slow crushes will do 1260, 1270 or 1280 damage. When already slowed down, it will do 1300 damage. Floor crushes will do 160 or 180 damage. Group F has the Spider Mastermind with a height of 100 map units. Heh, <laughs> Group F. LOL. Fast crushes will do 110, 120 or 130 damage. Slow crushes will do 1820, 1830 or 1840 damage. When already slowed down, it will do 1860 damage. Floor crushes will do 230 or 250 damage. And last but not least, Group G has the Cyberdemon with a height of 110 map units. Fast crushes will do 130 or 140 damage. Slow crushes will do 2020, 2030 or 2040 damage. When already slowed down, the damage will be 2060. Floor crushes will do 250, 260 or 270 damage. So, crushers do damage. What else can they do? Let's have a look at the code. First, it checks if the entity underneath the crusher fits within the floor and ceiling heights. If there's no space, continue. When a flying enemy gets caught under a crusher, then it will get pushed down until it hits the floor. Things attached to ceilings are a bit strange. These two will get pushed down, but will not ascend again once they've hit the floor. If the entity is a corpse, then turn it into a pile of flattened chips. Also, remove the collision and set its height and radius to zero. Keep in mind that when an entity dies, their height gets quartered, so the height of the entity will change on the fly if a crusher kills it. This piece of code causes a couple of issues. First of all, if the entity is turned into jibs, then any consequent events bound to the entity cease to exist. For example, an explosive barrel deals blast damage on its fourth explosion frame. But if the crusher turns the barrel into jibs before it reaches the fourth frame, then it never gets to explode. This can also happen to monsters whose deaths trigger something in the map, like the Mankey by and Arachnotrons in Doom 2's map 7. Useful tip? Always use slow crushes if you intentionally want to crush barrels or monsters for scripted events. The slow 
slow down makes sure the death animation completes before the corpse is turned into a pile of jibs. For Mankibai, Arachnos and boss monsters, you may want to stack crush damage to make sure they die quickly and not when the crusher is within corpse flattening height. We'll talk about damage stacking later. Second, the entity's collision is removed and their bounding box essentially turns into a point when crushed. Archfiles, however, can still resurrect these corpses and restore the enemy's sprite. Their collision, height and radius are not, however, turning them into ghosts that can phase through walls. The only way to kill these ghosts is through blast damage, melee attacks from monsters, or by shooting projectiles at their origin when its Z value matches that of your weapons, which is 32 map units. Fun fact, in Doom version 1.2 and below, the collision was not removed, leaving behind crushed corpses you couldn't walk over. Whoops. The corpse flattening can also affect the player. By building up enough speed while getting crushed, your gypped corpse may get flung out. Your corpse will have the same capabilities as ghost monsters, allowing you to briefly phase through walls as long as your corpse has momentum. Speaking of escaping crushers, you can also do it whilst alive. All you need to do is build up enough speed so that your newly calculated position does not make contact with the crusher. This is fairly consistent when the edge of a crusher traps you because you don't need that much distance. If you get crushed underneath the center of a big crusher, then, well, say your prayers. Anyway, moving on. Items dropped by monsters will get removed when crushed. Those placed by the map maker will not, however. If the crushed entity cannot be damaged, like corpses and decoration, then don't bother dealing damage. If the global game tick is divisible by 4, then deal 10 damage. Also, spawn blood and make it spray all over the place. In Vanilla Doom, this spraying is broken though, and merely trickles down. It's broken because Vanilla Doom thinks the blood splatter is stuck inside another entity. Despite having no collision set, the game will still kill the blood splatter's momentum. Engines like Boom fix this collision check and have functioning blood spray. Whee! Alright boys and girls, time for some crusher mapping tricks. Did you know you can stack crusher damage? It's really easy. Just slice the crushing sector into multiple sectors. That way each sector will deal separate crusher damage and accumulate to massive numbers. You can also increase the sector damage without slicing it up. It's an extremely gross hack related to how the game goes through the list of sectors. What you can do is create out of bounds dummy sectors that are crushers. Each sector has a unique sector ID and associated lines pointing to the sector. Now create a crusher you want to use that deals massive damage, then what you do is point the lines to the sector IDs of the dummy sectors. The engine now thinks the disconnected line is part of the sector, so when it goes through the list of crushers, it sees the line here is part of the block map grid that checks for crushing. This is done for each dummy sector you've added, so the damage will accumulate. If you create like 400 dummy sectors, then you've got a crusher that insta kills a cyber demon. Super cool! What you can also do with dummy sectors is create completely silent crushers. The sound of crushers is emitted from the center of the sector's range. If you create an out-of-bounds dummy sector, which has its lines point to the same sector ID as the crusher, then you expand its range and shift its sound origin away from the crusher that is visible to the player. You can also make a crusher go wild. Crushers will ascend again when they reach 8 map units above their floor height. You can break this by lowering the ceiling until there's less than 8 map units of space left. The crusher will alternate every tick between ceiling height to 8 map units above the floor height. What can you do with this? Nothing? Are you a map maker and you're feeling malicious? Are you cooking up a shitposty map? Then try out this trick. In Doom, doors will seek the lowest neighboring sector and will use that to determine its stop limit. If the neighboring sector is an active crusher, then the lowest ceiling height keeps changing. Make a dummy sector with the crusher and an extension of the troll door and watch the player lose their mind. Alright, that's all cool and stuff. We've checked different crusher types, how much damage they do, how things are affected when getting crushed, and some cool mapping tricks. Question is, how do crushers actually work? You know, how does the game know which areas are considered crushing and which entities are supposed to get crushed? It's actually not that complicated. The game knows which lines form the sector that is used to crush stuff. It calculates the grid of blocks that cover the sector. The grid uses the most extreme points of the sector. If the crusher sector is 32 map units within a neighboring block, then that block is part of the grid as well. In the center of this grid, a point is created where the sector sounds emit from. In this case, it's the crusher's brown noise or mechanical clicks. When a crusher is activated, I think is created which makes the sector move up and down and also scans for entities to crush. Each time the thinker thinks, it checks all the blocks associated with the sector and checks which bounding boxes of entities overlap with the sector. Actually, let me correct myself. They don't have to overlap with the crushing sector. All it checks is if the entity in the block is in a sector it cannot fit in. If you create a sector which is too low for, let's say, a baron, and inside the same block you place a crusher, then the baron will take crusher damage despite being far away from the crushing ceiling. 
We mentioned crushing sectors that are 32 map units within a neighboring block will include that block in its grid as well. We can create an even bigger distance between the crusher and the thing getting crushed like this. Let's get even crazier. Let's create an out of bounds dummy crusher to create a huge block map grid. Then in the center we place a baron who will be slightly stuck inside the ceiling. The crusher will go through all the blocks in the grid looking for things to crush. Finds a baron here who cannot fit in this sector and thinks it should be crushed. This way it looks like the baron is taking damage from nothing. We can use this weird block map oddity to stack damage as well. Let's place a fast crusher here and around it 4 slow crushers. All 32 map units within the central block to include them in the blocks to check. Notice how the slow crushers will slow down as if they trapped something? Very interesting indeed. By the way, all the damage values we went through can be thrown out of the window with this block map oddity. If the hidden crushers you use travel an absurdly long distance, then it will deal damage for a very long period of time. On paper, crushes seem pretty simple, but as you can see, there's lots of jank and tricks involved. Hopefully this video was educational and taught you some new crusher techniques you can apply in your doom maps. I would like to thank you, the viewer, for sticking around until the end, patrons and YouTube members for the support, and a shout out to the following patrons because they're all sexy smacks you sell. 19 Day, Agonizing Oral Pain, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andri Dicklin, aka Machhauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Beaks Make Me Coom, Ben of Langley, Big Gulps, huh? Bitcore, Bofu, Bandestorm, Choose Your Fights, Erwin Wolf, Far, Florida Man, Green Knights 9000, I'd buy that for a dollar, I don't Funkin No, John Hopper, Joseph Shantz, Katsune Teku, Kiryu Gorobets, Master Biggie, Matthias Sippert, Max Payne 67, Old Man Han, Pete Peterse, Pyro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Sean Anana, Space Duck, Spectier, Steak Jacobs, Stephen Bone, Teko Kami, Thomas, Timothy Collar, Turbine 2K5, Victor Rick, Watch Space Dandy, and Who's Ace. Have a good day, see you in the next one.